If you're looking for an interactive tool to create engaging online lessons for your students, this is the video for you. Today, we will navigate Nearpod together. In this video, you will learn how to enable settings for full student participation. Create a Nearpod from beginning to end. Save and upload PowerPoint or Google Slides to Nearpod. Create slides in Nearpod. Create and enable interactive slides. Save and upload PDF files and record audio in Nearpod. It is essential to enable settings for full student participation in Nearpod. Follow along to see how it's done. Once you've accessed your Nearpod account, click on your picture. Next, click on Lesson Settings. Once you are in Lesson Settings, you have the option to enable or disable the following features. If the feature is enabled, you will see blue and it will say on. If it is not, it will be gray and it will say off. It is very important that you are aware of the features that are on and off. The collaboration tool can only work if it is on. This setting must be enabled to work. Also, if you want to require students to submit the different activities, the feature has to be on. You can see the other options that can be enabled as well. Make sure the ones that you want on are on and the ones that you want off are off. Keep watching to see how to create a Nearpod lesson from beginning to end. When creating a Nearpod lesson, I found it easiest to create it in PowerPoint. Creating your Nearpod lesson in PowerPoint allowed me to edit slides easily. If you would like to upload your PowerPoint with audio, add audio, and then save it as an MP4. I'll show you the process. I teach, I create, I inspire, I am CMS presents Navigating Nearpod. Once I was done recording, I press stop. Now we can exit out of this frame. As you will see this icon here, that tells me there is audio on that slide. If you would like to edit it, you can edit it. If you'd like to play it, you can play it. I teach, I create, I When we would like to save it, go to File, Save a Copy, make sure to change your saving file type to MPEG4. Save it to the destination of your liking. I'm going to save it to my flash drive. and press save. At the bottom of your screen, you will see where it says creating video navigating Nearpod MP4. When that is done downloading, you are able to add it to Nearpod. Once your PowerPoint is created and downloaded as an MP4, you are ready to begin your Nearpod lesson. Click new you're going to determine what you want to do. We're going to click Lesson in Nearpod. Let's add our downloaded MP4. First, you're going to click Add Slide. You're going to click Video. You're going to choose up 
upload a video. You're going to choose the destination in which you saved your video. Find the file and click open. You can see the progress of the upload. If you'd like to cancel it, you can cancel it. As that uploads, you will see that your video will soon appear. So at this point, our video is one stream of a video. I will play a portion. I teach I You will save it. And it will go back to this frame. If you would like to upload your PowerPoint in individual slides, you can do that too. I will show you how. You are going to go to, you are going to go back to your PowerPoint and save your PowerPoint as a PDF. When saving your PowerPoint as a PDF, you will not have any audio. File, save a copy, making sure to change the file to PDF, determine where you would like it to be saved, and click Save. To upload your PDFs, you're going to go to Upload Files. You are going to go to the destination where you saved your PDF. And you can see your PDF is here, and you are going to click Open. Here, you have the option of uploading it as a, a Create PDF Viewer or individual slides. I'm going to choose individual slides. As you see, once you upload your PowerPoint as individual slides, it gives you the flexibility to edit as you would like. As you see, the file is processing. When the file is done processing, full interactive editing can begin. We created our slides in PowerPoint and uploaded them that way. You can also create slides in Nearpod without the uploading portion. Click Add Slide. Click the word Slide. And the opportunities are endless for customizing your own slide. You can choose your theme, you can add videos, you can add text, you can add images or upload files. Please note, if you have already added a PowerPoint and you are adding a Nearpod theme, it will alter the look of your presentation. So in this case, we are not going to do it, but explore. Based on the slides that we have, you can see this word, interactive video. That tells us this slide is a video. But what if you wanted to add audio to your slides? You can. I'm going to click on the slide that I want to add audio to. I'm going to go to the bottom and click the word audio. And if you already have an audio file saved, you can click on audio file and embed the audio there, or you can record it in Nearpod. I'm going to click audio recorder. When you're ready to record, 
you're going to click the microphone. If you record and you don't like it, click the trash can and record again. Let's try. I teach, I create, I inspire, I am CMS presents Navigating Nearpod. When you are done recording, click the pause button. You can listen to it to see if you like it. I teach, I create, I inspire, I am CMS If it sounds good to you, press save. See it uploading to your slide. Make sure before you exit, you save. So now you will see the icon where you can tell that this slide has audio on it. It has the play button and a long audio bar. If I want to add more slides, I can. There are multiple options for me. There are multiple activities that you can add to your Nearpod lesson. Nearpod. You can add a time to climb, which is kind of like a fun race, an open-ended question where students can actually type in their response, matching pairs where you have to create pairs and students match them. You can create a quiz, a flip grid, which involves video recording, a draw it collaboration board, a poll, fill in the blanks, and a memory test. Let's explore these. Insert a collaboration board. When we insert a collaboration board, you can enter the topic and a description. So the topic is, tell me what you know about Nearpod. If you want to enter a description, you can. You can even add a photo. Then you're going to choose the style that you would like. Let's go with the corkboard. Press save. All added slides get added to the bottom. Once it has shown at the bottom, you can move it where you would like it to go. It can be at the beginning, it can be in the middle, it can even stay at the end. If students see collaborate in their lesson, they will be able to answer the question and it will be submitted to you. Let's add another activity. Add slide. Let's add an open-ended question. So when we add an open-ended question, we can add any question. What do you love about Nearpod? Also, to the far right, you can add audio that reads your question or your directions. Let me show you how. If I wanted to upload, I could upload audio. Or if I wanted to record, I could record. Click the microphone and record. What do you love about Nearpod? Press pause to stop. Press play to hear what it sounds like. What do you love about Nearpod? If you don't like it, you can throw it away. Or if you like it, press save. If you would like to enable where students can give an audio response, click on. Once you've added everything you would like to add, press save. Remember, all new slides will appear at the bottom and you can determine where you want it to go. Let's continue exploring, enabling and creating interactive slides. We're gonna upload a PDF that you can write in. 
Go to the destination where your PDF is saved and open that file. We are gonna open Navigating Nearpod Word Search. Click Open. We're gonna upload it as an individual slide. Once it is done uploading, it will appear at the bottom of your grid, just like before. So in order to draw on this slide, we need to convert it to a draw it. So click on the slide that you want to draw on. Next, you will click on convert to draw it. It will ask if you want to keep a copy of the original slide. You can select yes or no. I normally say no. Once you see this icon here and the words draw it, this slide is now able to be written on. Let's check it out. Once the slide uploads, you can alter the image if needed. It can be rotated. It can be turned upside down or even a mirror image. You can explore the zoom. When you preview this document, you will see the writing tools that students will have to actually write on your document. If you press the arrow down, you will see that you can record your instructions or add a video, an image, or other content. If you would like this to be a timed activity, you can add the timer. You can designate how long students have. If you'd like to give them two minutes, give them two minutes and press add. Once you're done, press save. If you would like to see what students will see, you're going to click on the slide and click preview. As it's generating the preview, you will actually get to see the student's view. Down below, you will see the drawing tools that students have to actually draw on the document. Here is the highlighter. If students found words, they can manipulate their mouse or their stylus, or if they have a touch screen, they can highlight the words. Here is the text box. If they wanted to add words that way, or here is another drawing tool that allows them to write. In this case, this is a word search, so the highlighter is probably best. They can choose the color that best suits them. Pod offers many opportunities for students to be engaged in their online lessons. When you click add slide and you go to activities, you can see the different options that there are. The time to climb feature is best for simple tasks that don't require a lot of work, but it keeps the student engaged because it is seen as a race time type feature. So, you can enter your question, it could be two plus two. Then, if you want to, you can add a image for reference. Then you're going to answer your, then you're going to add your answer options. You can put four, which is the correct answer. You're gonna to wanna to click the check. That indicates that the answer is the right response. Then you can put the answer of two or any other answers. If you would like to add an additional answer, you can click plus add answer and continue to add responses until you are satisfied. If you would like to add another question, click the green button and add question. We'll do something fairly simple, three plus three. 
This time, I am going to do the incorrect response first. I am going to scroll down and I am going to do the second response as the correct answer. So I'm going to click the check. If I only want two responses or answer selections for this question, I can leave it at two or I can add another answer choice. If I no longer want a third answer choice, I can go to the far right and click the trash can. When you have added all of the questions that you would like to add, click save. When the time to climb is done being processed, you will see it at the bottom of your grid. Time to climb can only be previewed in the student's view in the game that they will actually see. You can preview it for accuracy, making sure that your problems and your answers both match, but the actual game is very, very engaging for students where they're actually climbing a mountain. Matching pairs. You can add instructions, and then you're gonna actually add the pairs. Another engaging activity is matching pairs. You can add instructions if you like. Let's add our first pair. Two, if you don't want to use the plus sign that's on your keyboard, you can click this button here. There are many symbols that you can choose from. Plus two, and over here, we are going to write the sum. Two plus two is four, so we're going to write four. And click done. If you'd like to add another pair, you can. Let's do five times five. The multiplication symbol, remember, can be found by clicking the pie icon. Times five is 25. Click done. If you want to add another pair, you can, or if you're done, click save. Remember, we can find our newly generated slide at the bottom. If we'd like to preview it, make sure you click it and then click preview. So for the magic game, you are going to find the pairs. Let's start with two plus two. You're going to click that slide, and then you are going to find it's match. Two plus two is four, but let's click the wrong answer. You see, it was indicated with an X and red. Let's try it again. Two plus two is four. It is green, and we have checks, and you can see those two cards are now blue. And we will proceed with five times five, which is 25. And it actually gives you a score. Well done, three tries. And it tells you to wait for your teacher to continue with the lesson. The next interactive slide that I'm going to show you how to use is the fill in the blank. You can choose the style of writing that you would like in the color background. Let's choose green. Then here. Let's do two plus two and be sure to include the equal sign and write the answer of four. Let's do one more. Six plus six equals 12. We're going to scroll down and click next. Then you are going to click the words on the right, which in our case is the green box, to add to the word bank. So we are going to add the four and we're going to add the 12. Then we're going to click done. I will show you what it looks like in the preview. Our fill in the blank slide is clicked. I'm going to click preview and you will see how the game is shown for the students.
So the numbers are shown at the bottom of your screen, the number four and the number 12. So if we know six plus six is 12, we are gonna drag our 12 to the black box. If we know that two plus two is four, we are gonna drag our, drag our four to the black box. And you see when it doesn't go into the black box, it goes right back to the gray box. And when we are done, click done. And it gives you your score. Today I gave you a glimpse of the activities that I have used. Once you are done adding interactive activities to your Nearpod, you can continue the editing process. If you would like to delete a slide, click on the slide that you would like to delete, right click, and delete. It will ask you, are you sure you want to delete the slide? You can indicate no or delete. In this case, I'm gonna say no. If you would like to preview your whole document, press save and exit. You can title your lesson. I will entitle it Navigating Nearby. You can add a description if you would like. You can add the grades that it covers and the subject. We'll say fifth grade and we'll say math. Save and exit. Once you are back at your library, you'll be able to preview the entire Nearpod lesson. When watching your preview, you're going to have to press play to hear audio on your video. Remember, our first upload was the entire video. So you will see these slides as one complete video. If I let it play, you would see the entire video. Remember, then we added our slides as PDFs, and they were added as individual slides, and we added audio to our first slide. And then we can proceed to the next slide. If I wanted to add audio to the slide, I could. I would have to go back and edit. Collaboration slide. When students come to this slide, they will share their thoughts and click the word post and it will post. Then they can move on to the next activity or next slide. In this case, it's our open-ended question. Remember, we added audio to our slide. We can press play. What do you love about Nearpod? We can answer our question and then proceed to the next slide. Our time to climb game. Are navigating Nearpod word search. Therefore, we have the drawing tools to write on our Nearpod slide. And the lesson progresses. We have our matching pairs. Remember to click, click, match. And our fill in the blanks. Remember to drag from the bottom to the top into the correct box. I hope you enjoyed this Navigating Nearpod lesson and you learned a lot. Be sure to add any questions to the bottom of this video in the comment section below.